Hello dear students, uh, dear friends. Uh, in this video, I'll be talking about second quantization in fermions. And uh, we have already gone through second quantization and, and we have used this framework uh, on bosons. And, uh, uh, and now we are going to subject fermions uh, to the formalism of second quantization. And rather, it's always good to, to have a state of repetition. Uh, what we have in quantum mechanics is uh, the description of many body uh, systems that comprise identical particles. Uh, they, they certainly present uh, uh, unique challenges to, to formulate those problems, to solve those problems. Now, for fermions, uh, particles that obey Pauli's exclusion principle and and fermite rock statistics like uh, electrons, uh, protons, okay, uh, uh, these challenges are, are particularly pronounced due to anti-symmetry. Anti-symmetry. So, so this is due to this anti-symmetric nature of their wave function uh, when we have uh, exchange of particles. Uh, as we have already discussed, exchange of particles. Now, uh, the traditional way of dealing with, with problems using quantum mechanics, what we, what, we, uh, what we call as first quantization approach, where the particles are quantized, but the fields are, are classical. And, and things become cumbersome when dealing with systems where the number of particles is not fixed uh, or when accounting for the anti-symmetry is required. So this second quantization certainly provides uh, a powerful and elegant framework basically to, to address these issues. And in this formalism, uh, fields are quantized and, and particles emerge as excitation of these fields. And this approach naturally in, incorporates the, the indistinguishability of particles uh, and the, the, the requirement of anti-symmetry of the wave function. Now, for fermions, second quantization introduces, uh, it introduces creation and annihilation of operators and that obey specific anti-commutation relations, anti-commutation relations. So, uh, uh, so, so these anti-commutation relations basically encapsulate the fermionic statistics. So, uh, as usual, we have a folk space here, and uh, this, uh, I mean, the, the, the foundation of uh, second quantization lies in the construction of this folk space, uh, a Hilbert space that accommodates states uh, with varying particle number. Now, for fermions, the, the folk space, uh, which is a slanted F, uh, is, is defined as the direct sum of anti-symmetric n-particle uh, Hilbert space. Uh, so, so this F uh, uh, represents and it, 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 it represents a direct sum, I should write it, the direct sum of anti anti symmetric n particle Hilbert space. So H has a curl Hilbert space. So uh, this is our folk space, and if I have to draw this folk space, I can draw it like this is my F. And 
it's a space which has which is made of n number of Hilbert spaces so I'll call it n here and the number goes to infinity from n equal to zero so this is a representation of folk space uh, for my uh, for my uh, fermions where this hn is uh, it's not the Hamiltonian don't be confused with that this h is the same thing it's it's the anti-symmetric n particle Hilbert space anti-symmetric n particle n particle Hilbert space and this is constructed as an anti-symmetric tensor product also known as exterior product this Hilbert space so uh, so we have this uh, this H uh, n uh, this is the anti-symmetric n particle uh, Hilbert space uh, which is constructed as anti-symmetric tensor uh, product and we also call it as uh, the exterior product of n single particles uh, Hilbert space now if I have to write down this H n this is gamma n h1 it's 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 basically the uh, it's basically the, the, this this anti-symmetrization that we have what it does basically it ensures that the exchange of any two fermions uh, introduce introduces a negative sign in the wave function in accordance to uh, what we call as Pauli's exclusion principle so this is my uh, n particle uh, what we what, what, what would I call it uh, the n particle uh, n single particle and single particle Hilbert space this H is n single particle Hilbert space now uh, so so moving on from here uh, we have creation and annihilation operators uh, in uh, in fermions now in second quantization uh, the fundamental operators that we say are creation and uh, and uh, uh, annihilation operators so in case of creation operators uh, the particle adds and in case of uh, annihilation operators the particle is subtracted from the folk space so the creation operator here creation oper operator that is ci dagger what it does it adds it adds a fermion it adds a fermion to a single uh, particle state and then we have annihilation operator here annihilation operator so that is CI what it does it it removes a fermion so it removes it removes a fermion from a single particle state now these are operators ci dagger and ci the creation operator and the annihilation these operators uh, act on the folk space and how does it act so if i have to go with the creation operator so here i have ci dagger it acts on this hilbert space and you come up with a Hilbert space with n plus one particles and CI the annihilation operator acts on the Hilbert space n, and you come up with a Hilbert space with n minus one number of uh, particles 
Now, as usual, these operators have, have a relation with each other. Now, here, in case of bosons, we have had the, the, the commutation relations between the creator, creation operators and, uh, and annihilation operators. But here, we have anti-commutation relations. That means these particles anti-commute with each other. So, fermionic uh, uh, creation and, and annihilation operators obey anti-commutation relations. Anti-commutation relations. Now, uh, this anti-commutation relation actually, uh, in a mathematical sense, what it does, basically, it reflects the, the anti-symmetric nature of these fermions. So, uh, so how do we deal with them? So, if we have, so here we use curly brackets for anti-commutators, CI and CJ dagger, uh, this is C I C J dagger, then plus C J dagger C I, and this is our chronic delta I J. So this is a mixed anti commutation. This is a mixed anti commutation relation. And for creation operators, if I have to write it for, for creation operator, for creation operator, I write CI dagger, then CI dagger, the curly brackets, and that gives us CI dagger, CJ dagger, then plus CJ dagger and CI dagger, and that's equal to zero. And for annihilation operator annihilation operator uh, what we have we have the the curly brackets c j and i should call it ci ci and cj will give us ci cj plus cj ci is equal to 0 now, what does these relations do actually is these relations ensure that no two particles, no two fermions can occupy the same quantum state. What is reflected in Pauli's exclusion principle as applying the, the creation operator twice to the same state, it will yield zero. So, if I had to write down that, I mean, I'm applying the same creation operator, suppose C. Uh, I dagger is a creation operator when I, when I do it two times I, I, I get zero now there is a convenient way there is a convenient uh, basis for fermionic folk space and and uh, that is uh, that that's that's called uh, that's what's called as occupation number occupation number and uh, this is uh, in general we call it op occupation number basis now in this representation each many body states is specified by a set of occupation number n i as we did it in case of bosons and uh, and uh, uh, well, this Ni that we have introduced here, this Ni is equal to 0 or 1. So, this is, this result that we have 0 or 1 uh, is due to Pauli's exclusion principle again. Now, a general folk state is expressed. Now, if I write down a general folk state as N1, N2, N3, and so on and so forth as uh, C1 dagger this is N1 and then C2 dagger and this is N2 and C3 dagger this is N3 
and so on and so forth. Here, this this cat of zero, this cat of zero is a vacuum state. with no particle present in it. Now, proceeding on, now the action of this creation and annihilation operators on the occupation number. So we have the occupation number and what we do is we act, uh, we act this occupation number either with a creation operator or an annihilation operator depending on the kind of problem that's being under consideration. So, so what we have to do here is that the, this action of the creation and annihilation operators on this occupation number states uh, is defined with careful attention to, to the anti-commutation relations. So, so one has to keep in mind the anti-commutation relations while, while executing an operator on this uh, occupation number basis. So for creation, for creation operator, now what I have CI dagger and I am utilizing this on this occupation number. So what we have is minus one sigma J greater, no J should be less than I, then N J Okay, then 1 minus Ni, then move on because we have to add a particle to this state. So this have Ni plus 1, so on. So this is the representation of a creation operator on a Fox space. And, and writing down the annihilation annihilation operator so in this case I have CI acting on my folk space uh, occupation number and getting minus one Sigma J less than I and and uh, and I then so on to n i minus one two. Now the point is that uh, that what's the point of, uh, of 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 explanation here is this term. So this is how I forgot. Here is n j. This term. Now what is this term? This is minus one. Sigma J and I and I. Now this term arises from the need to swap the uh, the operators to bring this CI dagger or CI to the correct position accounting for uh, fermionic sign and 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 changes that come in action due to the anti-commutation between the two operators so this is the phase and this phase takes care of that the addition of a particle or the subtraction of the particle now any operator corresponding to an observable now, if we have an observable and it has a corresponding operator, uh, in, in the first quantization can be expressed in terms of creation and annihilation operators in second quantization. So this point should be borne in mind that that uh, that 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 these creation and operation or uh, that the, these creation and annihilation operators can be. Uh, can be executed for for any observable in second quantization, uh, as is the case uh, uh, for 
operators in general in, in first quantization where an operator represents uh, uh, the uh, where an operate, operator is a, is a representative of an observable uh, in the quantum mechanics so if we have to if we have to to write down a single particle operator here single particle operator now a, a, in general a single particle operator is represented as o cap uh, acting on a particle now how do we how do we show it this single uh, uh, single particle operator it is sigma i j o i j c i dagger and c j where what is this o i j it's nothing but the expectation value of this o that is in a state say phi i o and phi i so this is our single particle operator here and we can also have a two particle operator so two particle operator now in two particle operator say let's assume that 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 that's generally symbolized as v cap now uh, such as an, an interaction potential i take it as as an interaction potential this interaction potential is given as 1 by 2 sigma i j k l then we have v i j k l then c i dagger then c j dagger then c k and c l where this v i j k l okay this v i g g k uh, g k l uh, what is it v i j k l is what uh, it is the expectation of phi i phi j v then phi k and phi l so we have this uh, two particle operator and we have uh, we have written down a single particle operator now for a system of fermions the Hamiltonian can be written in terms of the creation and annihilation operators. So, uh, so, so what I will have here is if I have, I should write here for for system of fermions. Okay. Uh, so what is H? H is uh, what call this H naught plus H interaction. All right. Now we have non-interacting part. This H naught is non-interacting part. Non-interacting part. And we can write down this non-interacting part of the Hamiltonian as sigma i j t i j then c i dagger and c j. Where this Tij that's here, this is uh, uh, they are the matrix elements of kinetic energy operator. So Tij, they are matrix elements of kinetic energy operator. All right. So the non-interaction part, uh, if we take an example of this uh, uh, non-interacting fermions, now in case of non-interacting fermions, the electrons in, in some potential, say, uh, say, uh, say, say the Hamiltonian, in that case, uh, uh, the Hamiltonian simplifies. If we have non-interacting uh, uh, fermion system. Now, if I assume that I have an eigenstate phi i, and of a single particle Hamiltonian, I'll call it a single 
particle Hamiltonian. In this case, what we have is uh, H cap phi i of r is E i phi i of r. Where this h cap is nothing uh, but over Hamiltonian, this is minus h cross scale by 2m del scale plus v of r. Now, uh, Hamiltonian in 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 second quantization. I mean, if if I go with h, uh, if I go with h now. Uh, what is h h cap? I can I can write down it as sigma e i c i dagger and c i. Oh. This form reflects that each fermion occupies a single particle energy level e i. So e i is energy level here. And the total energy is, is sum over all these occupied states. All of these occupied states, you add them all, that will give you the Hamiltonian. Now, the next important thing that, uh, that, that we can go with uh, from here is uh, commutation with observables commutation with observables commutation with observables now operators corresponding to observables must be constructed and, and they must be uh, constructed carefully to preserve the fermionic statistics now for example if I have the number operator suppose I say I have a number operator that is n cap and what it does it counts the total number of fermions so this number of op operator is sigma i c i dagger and c i and it satisfies the uh, the it satisfies uh, the the folk space it it sex uh, it satisfies uh, n cap on a on an occupation number was that n1 n2 and so on so forth as sigma n i then n1 n2 n3 so this is how uh, how we obtain the, the commutation with the observables you act that uh, uh, operator that we have uh, on the observables and you obtain the, the results and and finally uh, the time evolution uh, if we have to go with the time evolution uh, and equation of motion I mean in Heisenberg's picture say uh, we have operators they evolve in time so if, if I if I talk about Heisenberg's picture What, what's that? That's I H bar D by D T of C I of T is equal to the commutation between C I T and the Hamiltonian. Now using the anti-commutation relation and the Hamiltonian expressed in the second quantization one can derive the equations of motion for these operators. So I think it's gone too long and, and there is a need to, to conclude this uh, video. And what we have done in this video basically is uh, uh, we have used second, second quantization for fermions and second quantization for fermions, uh, they provide a robust mathematical framework to handle complex uh, many body systems and by employing creation and uh, uh, annihilation operators 
that is CI dagger and CI uh, by by employing the these uh, these creation and anti uh, uh, creation and annihilation operators uh, that satisfy these specific anti commutation relations it 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 precisely i mean it it elegantly uh, incorporates the essential features of these these fermionic uh, particles uh, and 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 exclusively demonstrates the Pauli's exclusion principle and uh, and the anti symmetry under the exchange. This formalism not only simplifies uh, the calculation but also deepens our understanding of quantum statistics as well as quantum field theory. So with this, I would like to stop here. Bye.